Hiking Nopal Cactus. In the early spring, my grandfather would come and get us, and we'd all go out into the woods and pick nopal cactus. My grandfather and my mother are slicing off the fresh, tender leaves of the nopal and putting them in boxes. My grandmother and my brother Arturo are pulling leaves from the mesquite tree to line the boxes. After we got home, my grandfather would shave off all the needles from each leaf of the cactus. Then my grandmother would parboil the leaves in hot water. The next morning, she would cut them up and stir fry them with chili powder and eggs for breakfast. Picando nopalitos. Al comienzo de la primavera, mi abuelo nos venía a buscar y todos íbamos al bosque a piscar nopalitos. Mi abuelo y mi mamá están cortando las pencas tiernas del nopan, nopal y metiéndolas en cajas. Mi abuela y mi hermano Arturo están recogiendo hojas de mezquite para forrar las cajas. Después que regresamos a casa, mi abuelo le quita las espinas a cada penca del cactus. Luego, mi abuela cocina las pencas en agua hirviente. A la mañana siguiente, las cortaba y las freía con chile y huevos para nuestro desayuno. Hammerhead Shark This picture is about the times my family went to Padre Island in the Gulf of Mexico to go swimming. Once when we got there, a fisherman had just caught a big hammerhead shark at the end of the pier. How he got the shark to the beach, I never found out. It was scary to see because it was big enough to swallow a little kid whole. Tiburón Martillo. Este tra cuadro trata de las veces que mi familia iba a nadar a la isla del padre en el Golfo de México. Una vez cuando llegamos, un pescador acababa de atrapar un tiburón martillo al cabo del muelle. Cómo logró llevar al tiburón a la playa nunca me enteré. Daba mucho miedo ver al tiburón porque era tan grande que hubiera podido tragarse a un niño pequeño de un solo bocado. Rabbit. My grandfather used to have a garden and also raised chickens and rabbits. In this painting, he is coming into the kitchen with a freshly prepared rabbit for dinner. My grandmother is making tortillas. That's my little brother, Arturo, sitting on the bench. He likes to watch my grandmother cook. And that's my younger sister, Margie, playing jacks on the floor. I'm watching from my grandparents' bedroom, which is next to the kitchen. Conejo. Mi abuelo tenía un jardín y también criaba pollos y conejos. En este cuadro, está entrando a la cocina con un conejo que acaba de preparar para la cena. Mi abuelita es de, se está preparando tortillas. Ese es mi hermano Arturo sentado en el banco. La banca. Le gustaba mirar a mi abuela mientras cocinaba. Y esa es mi hermana menor, Margie, jugando a los jacks en el suelo. Yo estoy mirando desde la recámara de mis abuelos, que está al lado de la cocina. Joseph and Mary seeking shelter at the inn. On each night of the nine nights before Christmas, we act out all the stories of Mary and Joseph seeking shelter at the inn. We call this custom Las Posadas. A little girl and a little boy play Mary and Joseph, and they are led by an angel. Each night, the travelers go to a different house. They knock on the door. When the door opens, they sing. We are Mary and Joseph looking for shelter. At first, the family inside refuses to let them in. Then the travelers sing again. At last, Joseph and Mary are let into the house. Then everybody comes in and we have a party. Las Posadas Cada una de las nueve noches antes de Nochebuena, representamos la historia de María y José buscando albergue en la posada. Esta costumbre se llama Las Posadas. Una niñita y un niñito representan a María y José y hay un ángel que los guía. Cada noche los caminantes van de una casa a una casa distinta, tocan la puerta. Cuando la puerta se abre, cantan, Somos María y José buscando posadas. Al principio, la familia no nos deja entrar. 
Entonces los caminantes vuelven a cantar. Por fin dejan entrar a María y José. Luego todos entran y celebran con una fiesta. I don't know anything about this. I mean, I know with cactus, so I'm just going to let you fly for this one. Mm, nopales is a cactus that's called a beaver tail cactus. Now, do we eat these kind of cactus? Um, you can you know? certainly find them in Mexican stores if you're anywhere around. Okay. They have been cleaned. All the, the thorns have been cut mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be a little slimy, kind of like okra if you've ever had it. Okay. Um, I personally have never fixed them, but it was a very, very common food during Easter, during the time that they don't eat meat. Oh, okay. Nopales became a very common part of that Catholic tradition of no mm. meat during the Easter season when they have uh, Lent. Oh, okay. So my mom wants to do this with my kids. Um, those of you who know my kids. Um, every year called Las Posadas. Um, and it's something that's really special and um, that I actually know some about. So why don't you tell us about your experience with Las Posadas and what it looked like in Mexico versus here when you were in, in, Mex in Texas? The picture up here is very accurate as far as what posadas are. It is technically a parade that happens for, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I think somewhere like seven to 10 days. And every night they either carry the st statue of Mary and Joseph or they dress up someone like Mary and Joseph. And the neighbors all get together and they sing, like, I guess, kind of like our caroling. You know, you've some, some of you know something about Christmas caroling. Uh -huh. And they go from door to door and they ask for posadas, which means, do you have a place of safety for us? Uh -huh. And the answer is always no. And this is based off of? The story of baby Jesus being born and Mary and Joseph not finding a place okay. because the town was filled. All right. What's your favorite part of Las Posadas? My favorite part of Las Posadas is the constancy of remembering uh, that special time. But I know that Tammy and I both share the really special tradition, which we do every year at our house, which is called Luminarios. Yeah, where you put, um, you get a large, was it, bag? I don't know. Sandwich. Yeah, like a sandwich, bag. a lunch bag. And you put in some sand and you put candles in and, and you put them out. And it's usually Christmas Eve. And isn't that when there's the big party at the end, right? That is absolutely when they find, finally find a place for Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. And the house is open and everybody goes in and they had a, a huge, huge party to celebrate Christmas Eve which is the big day. Christmas Day is minimal compared to that. So they pretty much open presents on Christmas Eve. Actually, is that right? presents aren't opened until the 6th of January, what? which is Epiphany. Okay. So presents so they have do never been. And then they do presents. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs>